So we are heading downtown to the Robinson Room for brunch with the ladies. It is Sunday, August the 25th, and I am super pumped about today. Um, I went to church at 8 o'clock this morning. Reverend Rex Tolliver was the pastor for today, and I love to hear him preach. He's actually the vice president of student affairs at the University of South Carolina. And um, so he comes to preach sometimes at our church, uh, and he also attends. And so what he talked about today was you're not in this alone. And I couldn't wait to get back home and actually journal. And I did journal all of this. And what he said in, he had five different points. And he came from Daniel 317, which was the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And one of the things that he said that really stood out to me is they were bound when they were thrown into the furnace. And the fire is what burned off whatever had them bound, the ropes or whatever, and then they were able to walk around in the furnace. And I never looked at it that way. And he, what he said was, there's sometimes you go through the fire because the Lord has to burn some things off of you, some things that you don't need to take where you're going, like pride and, um, and self-reliance issues. So some of those, sometimes those things have to be burned or singed off uh, and you, that occurs in the fire. So there's freedom actually in the fire. And I never looked at it that way. And I've got some own things going on in my personal life right now where I'm, I'm cutting off a couple of things. I'm burning off a couple of things. And I didn't quite understand because I just don't understand how some people can do things that just don't seem like it's right. Uh, and it's, it's a question mark. And so that was Daniel 317. And then he said a couple of Sundays ago, Elder Mark Richard actually preached from that same uh, passage for standing on business for Youth Sunday. Well, I didn't, I missed that because I was in California. And so that was two times Daniel 317 has been preached. And he was like, Lord, what am I going to preach about? Because he didn't, he didn't took my passage. Uh, but he said he was coming from God's point of view versus Elder Mark Richard was coming from the three Hebrew boys point of view. And so I got home and I was journaling and I said, well, let me see if I can catch Joel Osteen. So I tuned in his service and they were singing. So I caught some of the singing. Um, and then I thought somebody was having a, I thought he was having a guest preacher because there was somebody on there talking about sinking sand and um, foundation. I was like, oh, well, maybe he has a guest preacher today. Uh, so I tuned off and wrote in my journal about the sermon this morning and some other personal thoughts. And so then I, after I finished, I checked my email and I got an email from Joel Osteen's church saying, hey, join us live. And it gave the message. And I was like, Joel preaching today? So let me go and check. So I check again. And sure enough, he's actually preaching. So I catch him in the middle of the sermon. Y'all ain't gonna believe what the passage was. <laughs> well, I don't know if this was his main message passage because he did have a couple more. But when I tuned in, he was talking about Daniel 317 and the three Hebrew boys and going into the fire and being burned. And um, in his message, he said, things come with a question mark and then you have an exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is just the question mark straightened out. We're questioning things and we have questions why God asked us to do something or put us in a certain position. He's gonna take that question mark and turn it into an explanation mark. And he gave the example from the three Hebrew boys. Once they came out, King Nebuchadnezzar made everybody worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego. And so, Whenever he said that, he said it took the question of even if you don't, even if God doesn't deliver me, I'm still not going to worship you. I don't know why I'm being put in this situation because I try and do what's right. I try and follow God. But even, and I'm faced with this furnace, I'm faced with this fire. So even if you don't, if the Lord don't save me, I'm still going to, uh, I'm still not going to worship King Nebuchadnezzar. And so they get thrown into the furnace and then they come out and everybody's now decreed to worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And from that, that question mark of why the furnace then becomes an exclamation mark to give God the glory. Uh, and then the other one, he, example, uh, Pastor Osteen gave was around Abraham and how Abraham wanted a son so that he could pass everything on to. And then it took 20 years before that to happen. And then the Lord asked him to sacrifice Isaac on the on Mount Moriah. Abraham and Isaac were going up one side of the mountain, but the ram was coming up or the provisions was coming up on the other side of the mountain. Of course, Abraham couldn't see it. Isaac couldn't see it. But when they got to the top, Abraham 
probably was questioning, you know, why God is this the son that you gave me, but now you're asking me to sacrifice this son. So he had this question, but he didn't know that the provision was coming. It was a test. And so when he got to the mountaintop and was getting ready to slay Isaac, the Lord said, put down the knife and do not harm the boy. And there was a ram that was in the bush. And so what he was saying was now that question mark then became an exclamation mark because Isaac then goes on to have all these descendants uh, that we now say we are worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so I just thought that was phenomenal uh, to have another confirmation coming from Daniel 3.17 about the fire. Um, I've got a lot of personal things I'm going through now uh, just with like a relationship and then some financial things that I have going on. And I said this week, I, I said, when it comes to finances, I don't have anybody to depend on other than myself. And then I stopped myself in my track. I was like, wait a minute, that's not true. It's only me and God. God is the only person that can help me with my finances and the financial situation that I put myself in or I get myself into and the one that I'm in right now. And so to hear Pastor Tolliver say this morning that you're not in this alone. And I know that, okay? And that was just more confirmation to me from the Lord saying, hey, Renardo, you're not in this alone. And then he talks about July being the seventh month. And he said, you may have gone through some stuff in January, February, March, April, May, June. And then July is the seventh month. And the number seven is the number of completion. Now we're going into August. And August is the eighth month. And eighth stands for new beginnings. And he was saying how some of us are getting ready to step into some new beginnings. Me moving into this new place, trying to get back to just myself and living by myself and getting in a better routine so that I can make some goals and things happen towards this end of the year, um, in my opinion, was my new beginning. And I thought that new beginning was going to occur July 1st, but it didn't. Um, and so not to get into too many details about the personal thing, the new beginnings will begin today, prayerfully. <laughs> Uh, so those are the things that I'm just encouraged from the message today. And I just encourage you whenever you're praying, whenever you're asking God for things, whenever you hear these things in your spirit, um, if, you, if you don't know if it's coming from God, ask for clarity, ask for confirmation, and he'll give it to you. And then, But don't be doubting. Don't be like a doubting Thomas now. But when he tells you these things, you're going to have to believe it. Now, he may give you one confirmation, maybe even two, and maybe even three like he did me today. And I had literally just wrote in my journal, Lord, I don't need any more confirmation about this particular situation because after hearing Pastor Tolliver this morning, um, I know that what I, the decisions I've made was 100% accurate. And then I get into Joel Osteen's message and it's just reiteration of the more confirmation uh, for things to come. So I just wanted to share that uh, message with you. I will link both of them below so that you can actually go and listen to the full messages um, and just keep believing, keep praying, keep believing, keep trusting in God to provide um, it, to provide for you. And and Joel Osteen also talked about the plan, our plans and our wills, not God's plan and not God's will, but he's going to use it all for our good y'all that's Romans 8 and 28 so we're going to end up in the destined place that God has for us if we just continue to trust and we continue to believe and we continue to pray and just surrender our will to his and um, I'm going to end with this was what Joel said continue to dream keep your dreams alive but keep the plan to get to your dreams loose but it was basically saying you can hold on to your dream and keep your dream and be and hold that dream close but the way that you're actually going to get there in the plan, you got to leave that to God. Let the details be loose. So love you, fam. Hopefully this was encouraging to you today.